when you think of Sylvester Stallone, you think movie star, right? Yeah, action hero, and of course, Rocky Balboa. You might not think artist, painter, and writer, but he's all three of those. Sylvester Stallone's big break came about through the sheer power of his imagination when he hatched the idea that not only launched his career, but began the 40-year saga that we still can't get enough of. Let's start from the beginning. Was there ever a time that you doubted yourself? Yeah, I, you know, I, I thought when I, you know, I live in this, basically this flop house. It's $26 a week, very transient, and you share the floor with 10 people. You don't know anybody on the planet, literally no one. I think I recall you saying your acting low point, the Godfather, and you said you couldn't even get in a... <laughs> I couldn't even get cast as an Italian. I'll never forget where there's a party scene. Is it 300 guests? <laughs> I said, no. I go, what part of me didn't make past the Italian <laughs> identification aspect? They go, eh, I don't know, you just uh, don't fit in. I went, wow. That's God's gotta, telling that's me gotta, something. <laughs> that's got to play with your psyche a little bit. A little bit. I know. Yeah. But, but it didn't. And you decided to take matters into your own hands by writing yeah. Rocky. You know, I've been coming in for six years. In six years, you've been sticking it to me. I want to know how come. You want to know? I want to know how Okay, I'm gonna tell you. Cause you had the talent to become a good fighter. And instead of that, you became a leg breaker. You were able to write Rocky in three and a half days. The movie that went on to be Best yeah. Picture, you yeah. wrote in three and a half days? Yes. Was yeah. it just flowing out of you? Yeah, it was. I knew that this was going to be very flawed, but if I could get from the beginning to the end with some semblance of a character, then I'll repair the rest along the way. And you want to star in it. And you're told, no. You were even, you were even offered two hundred and fifty thousand. Three hundred and sixty. Three hundred and sixty. Mm -hmm. You're a struggling actor. Ooh. You you can't make ends meet. You get no. you're getting offered all this money, but you didn't take it. No, I just didn't understand how the rules of life were played at that point. But this character, I understood. To say that Rocky touched a nerve would be an understatement. In the 1980s, Rocky epitomized America's attitude and self-image, and the character continued to evolve in the new millennium, reappearing every few years to reflect America's changing hopes, fears, and dreams. Until finally, it appeared that the journey was at an end. The last Rocky movie before Creed the final scene. Was it your way of saying yeah. goodbye to the character, goodbye to that? Yeah, goodbye yeah. to everything. Goodbye to the best chapters of my life, at least professional life, it really was. Then along comes this young guy out of Oakland. I'm going, what? Ryan Coogler. Ryan Coogler. When director Ryan Coogler first met with Stallone, he was untested as a feature filmmaker, but he had an intensely personal idea for reviving the Rocky franchise. Coogler's father had fallen gravely ill a few years earlier. With Ryan by his side, there was only one thing the elder Coogler wanted to watch. The father is a very soulful, powerful man, and now he's being reduced to a shell of his former self. But oddly, he watches Rocky again and again and again. And his son, who loves his father, sitting right beside him, and he's watching his father disintegrate before his very eyes. The traumatic impact was so imprinted on this young man that he never got over it. So he comes to me, he goes, hey, look at this great idea. We're gonna, you know, revive Rocky. I go, how? And when he told me the story, I said, this is insane, wrong. You're a young kid, you haven't done anything yet, uh, but I appreciate the thought. He goes, okay, see you around. And he goes out and he does a masterpiece, Fruitvale Station, wins the Cannes Film Festival. Every studio wants him. What's he want to do? Creed. I went, now either this guy here is just trying my patience, or he reminds me of a guy I used to know. I was going to say, <laughs> that was you <laughs> that, 40 years ago. Yeah, it was, absolutely. Then I realized this is not a movie for him. It's for his father. This is all about a love letter to his father. You know, if you, if you really dug down deep and ask a real Rocky fan why he likes the movies, it's usually because they watch them with someone that they love. What's, what's so great about them is they're, they're so personal to people. You know, people just associate them with their family. He writes me the role of a lifetime, and then he has Michael B. Jordan, who's also brilliant, and I'm now pulled along, tugged out, 
by the present generation a character that could be their grandfather. What you mean don't think about this? When you start in treatment, I'm not doing no chemotherapy. I'm not crazy at all. If I could take everything that was good and put it into a bowl or something and say, hey, here, I'd like to buy one more day with my wife, I'd do it. Everything I got is moved on, and I'm here. I never wanted to do this movie. I thought sick Rocky is so counterintuitive to what Rocky really is designed for. I, I just laid there. I said, can someone else be sick in the movie and not me? Because I've never done that. My wife goes, you're a coward. No, you know, that's kind of a harsh word. He goes, no, no, it's, you're, you're yellow, basically. You're a coward. It goes against every undeclared artistic rule. If you're afraid of something, that's the commitment of the, of the artist. That's his duty to pursue the unknown, to go someplace where he's literally at odds with himself. All right, the old man? Yeah. You know, if you look hard enough, you can see your whole life from up here. How does it look? Not bad at all. And once I just gave up and realized this movie belongs to Michael B. Jordan, who is, he's, he's the youth, he's the engine. You're the caboose. I am Burgess Meredith. I am wisdom. I am experience. What do you remember from the Oscars 40 years ago? I, I remember driving up to the Oscars, and I had a rented tux, and it wasn't fitting very well, and the tie was a little loose, and I, and I was adjusting it, and it went sprung, and it broke. The driver goes, hey, don't worry about it. You can borrow mine. I said, no, 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 no. So I take it, and I put my collar out, which at that time was disco fever, and I go in, and people are looking at me as though, how? This is blasphemous. Now, what is going on? Is it like my cologne? I had no idea. And it was just, again, just naivete. I, I didn't think we were going to win. We were up against extraordinary works of cinematic filmmaking, I mean, on every level. The films nominated for the Academy Award this year are All the President's Men, Network, Rocky, Taxi Driver. And the winner is Rocky. What I remember most from the Oscars, how wide-eyed you were. Oh, yeah. First of all, you had to be dragged up there. You didn't want to go up. They brought me on stage, and I went, oh, no. <laughs> so tight. Here we go. Sylvester Stallone, I'd like to thank you for sharing your dream of Rocky with us and for giving a performance that has enriched all our lives. To all the Rockies in the world, I love you. When you said, this is for all the Rockies. This is all the Rockies in the world, yeah. Who do you think are all the Rockies in the world? We're all Rockies, in a sense. We all have this struggle to, to try to realize our dream, which is trying to be appreciated in their own lifetime to say, you know what? I'm not the fastest, I'm not the prettiest, I'm not the tallest, but I'd just like to take a shot at it one time, and then I'll know. You taught me how to fight again, and I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna fight this thing, but if I fight, I want you to fight too. No, even in my own life, that you realize that my ship has come and gone, my sunset is halfway down. I really, I'm really paying attention. Like this, right now, I'm photographing this in my mind. This is a really special moment in my life, because there's not that many moments left. You know, they're really getting very special, so, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to hang sharing. this one on the wall. <laughs> thank you for sharing this, yeah, this moment you. with us. Thank you.